Salve, salve, guitar community. Today's lesson is about introduction to blues, okay? Um, there's a short piece in the Hall Leonard uh, Guitar Methods in my book, it's page uh, 48. And I have a student who's been working on this piece now. And basically, what we're going to be doing is um, I'm just going to walk through the piece. And as, as we're doing that, I'm going to uh, discuss two things. Uh, one is the, the pull-off technique. There's a lot of stuff like that. Uh, so I'm going to review that concept of the technique and um, just give a little glimpse of what is it like to play the blues. Uh, this is a great piece for um, beginners who never played anything on the blues. Uh, further on, I, I try. I'm going to try to make this a more extensive uh, lesson. So this lesson is only about the piece. And the next lesson, I'm going to give a couple um, blues melody lines for you to play with. So, you know, whenever you're practicing this piece, you can play the head, so the melody, the original melody of the piece, and then you can play all other licks uh, on the chords of this piece. It's called uh, Grand Finale. There's, there's no name for a composer, but let's go on the guitar journey together, okay? So, there are several ways in which we could talk about the blues. I want to keep things uh, simple and short for now. I want to get into the music. So the only thing I'm going to say is that the blue revolves around three chords. Okay, You have your one chord, your four chord, and your five chord. In this case, the music we're looking at, E major is your one chord. Okay, B7 is your five chord, and A7 is your four chord. Um, in fact, most of Western music, as far as we as we know, for the past 100, 200, 300, for the past 500 years, if you trace it back to the Baroque period, to even to the Renaissance, most music revolves around those three chords, more or less. Is there more stuff in between? Yes. For example, in blues, if you're talking about um, jazz blues, it gets a lot more complicated. You have a lot more turnarounds, more stuff that you can add to um, make the sound goes, but more or less, that's what we have. So first step is I'm going to play the piece um, at the speed of no mistakes and with the metronome going, I'll play it once through. not so much okay basically you have um, as far as individual measures to learn you have one two three four five six seven okay quite repetitive sounds good though okay so now one more time this time I don't know if you notice but for example uh, if you take a look at measure two I have something like bring the camera closer to my left hand so you can see kind of see what I'm doing as I play the first two beats so I played I, I played the E what really matters here is beat two where I play the G and then when I play the E I do a pull off like that I'm not doing anything with my right hand at the moment so all I'm doing is using my I'll pluck the G with uh, my right hand. And as I pluck the sound, I use finger number three to uh, produce the sound of the end of two. So it'll uh, be the end of the, the E. So you have. And I do that, in fact, with every other note. So starting from B2 and measure two, I have.
which is pretty cool. But this is a cool sound. If I if I'll be using uh, one of my electric guitars over there, um, you get kind of like a twinkling sound. Now keep in mind that not every style allows you to do that. Um, for example, in jazz, if you're using just a hollow body or even a full body guitar, they would like for you not to use any open strings. I use it. That's I adapt my technique so I can use that. Um, I come more from a classical background, Brazilian background, and we do like open strings. So I would say. Now, how do you produce this type of technique? How do you practice for that? Well, uh, in reality, is really close to what we've been doing um, in previous videos. There's one video that we talk about in the Pumping Island book where you do. Except that uh, this technique is a lot easier uh, with just hammering down kind of this. It's not this. This movement in guitar, I would say, it's barely exists. I've never seen, I'm sure there's uh, more extended techniques that you'd use this for the bulk of it. No. Okay. It's always this movement. So a good practice would be this. Make sure your thumb is not hanging out here. I know we're playing cool stuff, but still, if you look cool and can, cannot play the instrument well, that's not what I'm looking for. Make sure your thumb is stable and your hand is doing this, your hand is reaching out for everything. Make sure that all your fingers are going up. Don't keep your fingers here. See, I'm talking about those three fingers, especially those two, because at some point you might need them and we're going to take a look at the last two measures of the piece measure 11, 12, you use finger number two a lot and then out at the very end you use three. So it's important that all fingers are moving forward, even though you're not using them. That goes back to the idea of the spider exercise. So if you're having trouble in doing that, maybe you need to go back and do a little review of the spider, okay? Um, I highly advise you that all the previous lessons that we've done in the past, that you continue to practice that. Um, if I had the luxury, to go back in you know my college career and spend seven seven eight hours in the practice room I would spend at least one hour every day reviewing just uh, those concepts there in the first technique lessons that I, I posted last year okay and I've been posting since um, that carries with you forever I would say so once again This exercise for a little bit start the day maybe two or three minutes very relaxing uh, the other exercise we're gonna do it's gonna it's gonna be a, a measure from the piece itself I'll show you in the next session of the video so um, continue to what we discussed uh, in the last section of the video now I'm gonna take measures 12 11 and 12 uh, out of the grand finale piece and with the metronome on the metronome will be on the eighth note, okay? The reason why is that is because I want you to be able to uh, do not cut, to not cut the notes short, especially the one that we're pulling off. A lot of people do this. They cut not the other note short. I want you to have precision over your movements, okay? I'm gonna give you three and four, and I'm gonna start at the speed of no mistakes. So, to tell you about which is especially in measure one the pull-off is gonna be on always the beginning of the beat so that might seem a little confused 
What I'm talking about specifically is, let's say I'm gonna play uh, two and three and. So here's one. One and two and three and. So we're doing two and three and. Three is gonna be the beat that you're pulling it off. So two and three. Is that okay? Is that tricky? It makes it trickier. Okay, it makes it a little more difficult. Nevertheless, um, the way it sounds sounds pretty cool. I guarantee you. And we're, if we're going for syncopation here, it gives a different effect of it. Is it bad if I decide not to do any pull offs and just play the piece as written? No, not at all. Um, in fact. I've done that before, and I'll do that every time that I think that single patient's pulling me off. Um, before being cool, at any case, make sure you can play the notes and the rhythm that's written, okay? Um, that's first. If you cannot do what we're trying to do right now, no worries. In fact, right now I'm going to practice with you uh, without the pull off, okay? So same spot, measures 11 and 12. One, Without the pull off again, then I'm gonna do it again once again with the pull off. Three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. And. Now with the pull off. Three and four and one. Faster. Uh, now I'm gonna play those two measures as if you know on the quarter note, and I'm gonna be swinging a little bit. So one, two, ready, go. Different effect, right? Can I do it faster? Hmm, let's find out. A little bit, a little bit faster. Sometimes, before you start, if the rhythm is a problem, sing the rhythm. Okay, I do this with my students all the time. Just sing the rhythm before you play it. Okay, it's important that you understand the rhythm before you even start playing the guitar. Okay, one, two, ready, go. One. Sounds pretty cool. So this is the first uh, lesson of the blues. Okay, well, I'm going to spend more time using this piece of the sample to discuss the blues. Uh, basically, what I'd like to say is that we did two things today. Um, we played the piece as it is, at the speed of no mistakes. We kind of described what blues is. I'm going to spend the more lessons to come. I'm going to sp spend more time discussing about the. The theory of playing the blues uh, that involves three chords, uh, the one, the four, and the five chord. Um, the second thing we did, we talked about the technique itself. So um, the pull-offs, this. Notice how my finger is not going this way. I'm not moving, making any type of movement like this. Notice that my thumb has been stable the whole time and my hand is just moving back and down, okay? Uh, that's really important. Finally, we took two measures of the piece, measures 11 and 12, and we spent some time um, just practicing those measures with the pull-off and without the pull-off. Like I said earlier, if doing the pull-off is too challenging, play the piece without it, okay? Uh, make sure you're playing the right notes in the right time. The pull-off is tricky because it comes in the beginning of the beat, 
where it would be more natural if you if it came at the end of the beat. So we're talking about you know if you did something like which does happen in some sections. It happens when um, in measure two, for example, when you have one. So that's good, but measures 11 and 12, it, it kind of switches around, okay? So you have, for example, in measure 11, you have, you're plucking the D at the end of two, and the beginning of three, you're doing this. So you're on the B, that's more challenging, okay? Like I said, if you have to switch it there for now, that's okay, without the pull off. Uh, I'm more concerned about you playing the right notes. I'm going to have a lesson number two about the blues, so stay tuned for that. That should come sometime next week. Uh, otherwise, start practicing the piece. Uh, my private students, I, I know th three of them for sure, I've assigned this piece uh, within the last two weeks. So uh, we'll be discussing this in class. Uh, nevertheless, stay flame. Happy New Year. Happy 2018. I'll see you in the next lesson. Ciao.